came out, mother effing bang, mob. I trip. What up, what up? It's your boy Keith. Keith the go. Keith the president. Big Keith with a big one and big mob. It ain't nobody. What? Pop me in it yet? Yeah, yeah. You get it. You get it, don't ya? What's up, y'all? Hope you guys are having a beautiful day today because I know I am. Cause I'm back. I'm back and I'm fishy. Okay, y'all. What's up? So it is currently. Why am I always filming so late? Twelve twenty right now, and I need to finish this by. Well, now hold on. Now it depends on how long I need this video. I know how y'all get. This is another video that. Okay, honestly, let me let me preface this first. This was not supposed to be the video that I was supposed to film or edit or upload right now, but because I have to wait for something to get here before I can do the one that I did want to do, you guys are just gonna get this one now because everyone has also been requesting that I retell this story, and I was a little skeptical about it but seeing how well my last video did which was also a retell of a story that I did a few years ago I'm like oh yeah no let me go ahead <laughs> let me go ahead and get the girls what they want and I'm in the bathroom again today because I don't know I'm kind of living for this setup like at first I wasn't too sure about it but I was like wait no this is like I like the lighting I like how everything just kind of looks focus on me but then I had to know to bring this chair up in here oh yeah no this is it this is the one right here this is the one anyway so if you are new here and you haven't heard this story time before this is a retell of a story that I made a few years ago about at the time my uncle's girlfriend stabbed him in front of me. What's crazy is over cheating. It's never that serious. I promise you it was never that serious. Some of y'all might disagree with me because I know how y'all get. But you know what? In this situation, not only was it so not serious that she had him drive himself to the hospital, but it was so not serious that he did the most, oh my God, What's the opposite of Riz? He did the most un thing that you could do in this situation. This is my first time I ever got an ick at like toxicity because I didn't really understand the volume of how toxic this was and what toxic even really meant. Like I knew what toxic meant, but I didn't know what it meant. Pop that tea. Until the situation right here and until I had to basically like live around them for a summer. I didn't have to, but I mean, I kind of did because I didn't want, I'm gonna miss on that later. Anyway, let's get on with the story. Okay, so just for clarification, this all took place around the same time that I came out. I basically took took it upon myself to stay over at my grandpa's all weekend or all summer. And that's basically what I always did growing up. But I hadn't did it in so long. So it was kind of weird. And the fact that I kind of like relied on the internet was also a problem because he did not have Wi-Fi. My grandpa is old as sh love my grandpa down papa I love, you, I love you down but a wi-fi router would be amazing over there and the reason why the only downside to this whole situation was the wi-fi was because i did not have unlimited data i was on his plan so as soon as you hit your data usage limit that yeah wi-fi is cut and you know what at first it wasn't even always like that but I'm, I'm i don't listen a few years prior i was using the phone basically same type of data usage plan but every time i went over they would reset the data and you know they charge you for that <laughs> they charge you money and that next bill i don't know who at at&t was helping him but that i had my data usage is taken from me. As soon as I hit that limit, it was done, but now they gave me a reminder. So it would be like, use 80%. Oh, you at 90. You at 90, you only had the fifth of the money. So that was really the only downside for real. But like, other than that, I was in a safe space. I felt comfortable and no one else knew that I had came out. So honestly, the good outweighed the bad. And on top of that, my uncle was staying there with his girlfriend at the time. So we gonna call, we don't use their real names. I don't really care. My uncle's name is Drew and his girlfriend at the time's name was John Naya. And this is red flag number one. Any woman with a boy name trying to be a girl name, she just messy. She really is the problem. Like for real, for her. he was the problem as well but she was definitely the problem a lot more but at the time i didn't know that i was like listen yeah they get to fight and they do that but i didn't group around there so many times i didn't really care it was nothing for <laughs> wasn't really nothing it was nothing new for me i just always gravitated towards women it's always been my thing so i liked it when she was around because she was actually kind of funny i was just like oh it's good vibes when she's around okay i'm cool i mean well good vibes with me Good vibes with me because she knew better. But they never had no money. They never had no money. Life was hard, but it wasn't as hard as it is now. Let me give you some little mini stories. So one time we was going out to eat. There'd be a lot of large fries that we had to split. At a certain point, my grandpa was like, let me just give you some money and you use this for you. And you tell them to share money. Don't say you got it for me. I was like, thank you. I got tired of splitting McChickens. You feel me? Like I got tired of sharing my root beer with y'all. And the other thing that would happen all the time was my uncle's car would always break down. I don't know what he had going on. In the front of the car, like the engine ever got too hot, the car would just randomly just stop. You feel me? So he would have to get a gallon of water from the trunk of the car and then pour it into the like engine and i don't know where or why or why that works but you know i mean clearly it did it because it kept it kept 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 kept, kept happening but i'm not even gonna lie and be fake like it really was never a problem until it was and we never really had nowhere to go or nowhere to be for real for real it was never too late so he would just hop out grab that gallon of water he always kept like six back there and he poured in the engine and we'd be good but the one time the one 
time. And it was really needed. We didn't have no water, but that's a little later in the story. So other than them not having money, they just had a very toxic relationship. And I had known this girl for a little while because before they lived with my grandpa, they lived with his mom for a second. And I'm not gonna lie, like, she was cool. Like she wasn't too bad at the time. I always just enjoyed being around the feminine energy. But they was just toxic with each other. Like they would argue about any and everything. Like who dropped this pencil? I know you want to leave that lasagna in the oven. I don't know. They were just both very much emotionally immature, but they had some type of weird like bond to each other. And it was sad. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like, now that I look back at it, it was stuck in this cycle of like toxicity. Like every time they would break up, they always got back together. And like I said, that's like normal for me. I've always seen that with like adults in my life growing up. So I never really clocked how sad it was. But this is what this summer is when they just got too crazy. So at this point, let me also introduce some side characters. We got to unlock some characters real quick. John Nea, her sister, I forget her sister's name, but her sister also had two kids, a younger girl and then her son. They were both younger than me, but the girl was even younger than her brother. So one day, me, Gerald, and John Nea were with her nephew because her sister had worked and her sister didn't like trust us with the kid. I'm happy she didn't. Well, she didn't trust us with her youngest kid, but she always like let the nephew hang out with us if she was at work and John Nea would just be watching him basically. Or sometimes John Nea would watch him and then me and Gerald would go over to her sister's house and then we would just be like chilling with them and I used to love it because her sister had Wi-Fi. So one day we was all hanging out and there was this thing in Seattle if you don't know it's called like the Blue Angels and basically all these jets like just you know white people they don't know how to have nothing else better to do. So it was sunny outside it was summer we were just like okay let's do something like let's go get like have a water balloon fight but we wanted to also have her sister and her niece be invited to it so we were like okay we'll go back to her sister's house we'll chill when she gets back we'll all go to Walgreens get our stuff da -da -da, and then we'll you know we'll be kicking it and I was like Oh, actually, no, 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 no. That's not what happened. That is what happened, but we gotta, we gotta backtrack just a little bit. So we're actually gonna go to the day before the uh, Blue Angels event. <laughs> So my grandpa lives in Seattle, a very suburban neighborhood in Seattle. There's another city in Washington called Tacoma. Tacoma Roma is what we nickname it because the lake stick. I'm not gonna clock it because I know someone got in my ass about that last time. I'm not gonna I'm not even gonna talk about your city. <laughs> you know it smells like duck butter. So John and Joe was telling me that they have family out there, or she has family out there, and they're doing like this family reunion type of thing. And I was like, oh, well, can I come? Because I just never I didn't want to stay at home by myself. I didn't want to stay at my grandpa's by myself. So they say, yeah, and they said we're gonna be here for a long time. Are you sure you wanna come? And I'm like, yes, like I don't wanna be here all day by myself because when they would be gone all day I would be dummy bored but now I'm like used to hanging out with y'all I want to kick it with y'all so I was like yeah I don't mind like as long as I'm with y'all the whole time I really don't care what could be the worst that could happen we finally got there my uncle put water in the car anyways just so that when we left or anything he wouldn't forget and because you know you get to this barbecue it's one of them it's one of them park barbecues a lot of liquor a lot of liquor or fried chicken but mind you we got to the park we had to go to Johnny's auntie's house this is we're unlocking some more characters hold on it's about to get ratchet Johnny's auntie was basically the one I guess like hosting it that's the vibes it came off as and we got there I remember her auntie was very like outspoken very loud very she was ghetto okay and the neighborhood she lived in was very trappy I'm not even gonna lie like there's definitely I didn't say the whole city was but there's definitely little parts of it you feel me a lot of tires and hubcaps on her lawn very yellow no green grass nowhere thank the lord we didn't have the property there because one hot charcoal tuh, that house was bones I know she ain't had no homeowners insurance it was gone that was the city's house and I'm gonna put some videos of like that I took this day and you'll be able to see kind of how the surrounding area was and what the, even the porch of the house looks like like because girl the inside was even worse okay so i thought i had videos but i don't i only have a picture but look at the date august 3rd 2017 at 326 now let's get into the picture okay now this is we just gotta go through this real quick because my sensory deprivation is blowing me right now so first i don't know what's in this corner i don't know if that's cobwebs and cigarette buds but then why is there a fork on a cooler and why is the cooler so dirty but then why is the rug outside this is the porch and then let's not even talk about the feet that's John A's auntie that's the auntie's feet them feet only belong to a ratchet but plot twist I'm not even messy for real because I didn't even want to take the picture John A told me to take the picture and who's in the boot I think that was her messy ass and you know what honestly like just look at the few the few steps into the door it's just now I'm being messy. Let me stop talking. So anyways, we get there. They asked us to cook some of the stuff for them or help them finish cooking some stuff. So after we did all that, we went to the park and this is this is when I knew things was probably about to go left. I don't even know what to call it. There's a lot of ratchetivity. You feel me? A certain point where I don't know why, but I think someone said that I spit on them. And do I even give that? Like, this is like way later. This is like two hours into the barbecue. But I'm like, what? And this random black lady just started yelling at me. And I'm like, I don't even know you. And I don't even give it up like that. But you better stop because my uncle cousin 
Yeah. But anyways, after the barbecue was over, we went back to the auntie's house and I remember we were just kind of there just chilling for a little bit and then they got to bringing out that liquor. And not good liquor, I'm talking like, not moonshine, but like a little bit of hooch. I was like, yeah, we gonna be here for a little too long. Mind you, I barely had money for her around this time, so I didn't have no money for an Uber back. I didn't drive, so they was my ride and I knew that he wasn't gonna be driving drunk, especially not with me in the car. I had to wait for him to sober up, so I was like, we gonna be here for dummy long or we're gonna have to spend a night. And this is why I didn't wanna do that. Porch and everything, like I wasn't even scared about the neighborhood because there was mad people in there, you feel me? I feel like one person jumping here trying to start something, we gonna all jump in. It was the like condition of the inside of the house. So it was a small living room, small kitchen, which is fine, but then it was just like this long hallway and it's hecka wide, but then you will only use a portion of the hallway because the whole hallway is lined up with dog cages. They had like eight pit bulls. Every room had a bed frame, but no bed. Like it was all, it was just a lot of air mattresses. But my uncle reassured me and said he wasn't even gonna be there for that long and I started calming down. I was like, oh, okay, period. So I ended up going to the back room and it was like the master bedroom. It wasn't too much mastery about it. So now let me unlock some more characters. On top of Johnna's auntie, she was like watching these kids. I still remember you, Sonia. What's the other girl's name? This is light skinned girl. She was a thought. But Sonia, this girl, and they had like this little cousin there. And I remember I was like looking for them because I could hear them, but I couldn't see them. And I was like, what? But the closet, well, I'm not gonna lie, this is a fishy closet. Like it looked like, it, oh man, it was like a secret room that kind of leads a little bit further. I was like, oh no, this is fish. And I saw them in there and I saw that they were blowing that. And I'm like, no, wait, now hold up. Where did y'all get that? Let me try. At first, it was just me and the two girls, Sonia and the other girl. It was around my age. It was underage, but you know what I mean? We, we we was bad. We was just experimenting. Nothing crazy, though. We wasn't experimenting like that, though. Just a little bit of this. And the kid was just in the room on, like, an iPhone or something. But I remember the kid ended up coming into the closet, and then I, like, kind of put it down because, girl, come on. So one of the girls took the, you know what, out my hand. Mind you, Puck wasn't even getting high, and then gave the spliff to the baby. I was like, what? I smacked out the baby's hand so quick and I'm not gonna lie, I hit the baby's hand a little bit, but I don't care. I had to do what I had to do. So I started going back to the living room and this is when things start picking up. I can tell that Gerald and Johnny are arguing again because now they're not even like, when they're together and they're good, they're the type that are very lovey-dovey. They're always touching each other, always cuddled up on each other. But when they're beefing, they get to separate. It's just, oh my God, it's literally like triggering me. Even you can just feel the tension in the room and they're always on opposite corners. Like they make sure to let it be known that they are mad at each other. And not gonna lie, my uncle had to be the age that I am now. Like she was only like a year younger than him. So they're like my age now talking about this. And this is why it gags me a little bit more because I I could not imagine being in this struggle. So there were some people that also came from the party with us. I don't remember their names. They're not very like relevant to the story, but we're just gonna call them the homegirls. Johnna was talking to the homegirls. One of the homegirls' boyfriends was acting up and she was like, and I stabbed him. And Johnna is so monkey see, monkey do coded. As soon as she heard that, she her eyes lit up and she was asking to hear more about it. Like what happened to him? Did you get in trouble? Did he snitch on you? Would you go to jail? And I was like, oh. So I look at my uncle and you know he peeped. He puts his arm around her and he's like, Hey, 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 I don't want y'all talking to my girl about that, man. Like, I don't want y'all trying to tell her that she need to be stabbing me if she mad. Da, 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 da. And which is another point. Which is another point. Let's. I give ten. She is literally such a doink. As soon as he came over there and tried to like de-escalate that conversation and then try to like add himself to the conversation. At first she was quiet, but then when the girls was like, "You going da 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 do. And I'm about about okay, they didn't do all that. And they hyped her up and she was like, get your hand off me. Don't you ever try to come up with me, me, tell me what I can't talk about. Da 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 da. I'll tell you whatever I want. Okay, they didn't do all that either. But they got to cussing and got to arguing and it, it was like in a, a minute. Here we go again. I was just ready to leave at that point. So one thing that my uncle did was he always took these walks. I didn't understand how like emotionally mature this was that when he would do this, but every time they would get mad at each other and they would really get heated like how they just were and it happened quite often. He would just take a walk. Usually it would happen when we were in some pretty public places and it would happen at like daytime, you know what I mean? Or somewhere where I was familiar with. So when he would take a walk, he'd be back 10, 15 minutes. It was never a crazy walk. You me but this time I don't know what got into him but he felt so disrespected he kind of just walked away and he didn't say anything but I remember thinking to myself I should make sure he has his phone on him because we're in a city that I'm not too familiar with like yes I've heard about it yes I've been here before but I've never been in this area and I'm rarely out here anyway but then it was like late as hell I think it was maybe like 12 o'clock one o'clock like okay as long as you come take your walk and you be back 
Y'all, bye. Why did he not come back for like two hours? I was calling his phone. The phone would be ringing. The whole time it was in the living room. So I'm like, so y'all saw me blowing up my uncle's phone. Was nobody gonna say nothing? Remember, I remember like a few of the adults went out there to like look for him and it came back like 10 minutes later. They wasn't really looking for, you know, black people to go out and look. And then come back in, it wasn't there. I'm like, bro, what is happening? Like, you left me at the worst places. Like, this was the worst time that he ever needed to take the longest walk he ever took. Like, for real, you wasn't that mad. You know what I mean? Because there would be times where they would get to fight in, and I would come back to, like, the back room where they would stay at my grandparents' house, and he would have, like, a black eye. Which is also, let me um preface this. I'm not making light of that, okay? I think male abuse is very, very important, and I think that we need to start normalizing it. By the time you got to think, I'm not thinking like that. I'm 16. I shouldn't really be around this behavior, but I was so desensitized to it, I didn't understand, like, how big of a problem it was so I'm like I feel like sometimes he would get beat up for her like one night he came home I remember he left with her and it was both supposed to come back that night and then that same night he came back dummy later than he said he was gonna be I looked at his face his face and mind you my uncle's more light-skinned than me so face swollen eye black I was like what happened to you and I'm thinking that she did it I'm like hey now she did it uh, uh, making jokes so like, what's wrong with me but I'm not gonna lie I think a man beat him up for her or he got in a fight like for her about something and then I don't know I don't know he never told me I didn't ask him again about that because when I made the joke he not one chuckle fell out his lips he didn't even acknowledge it with a grin he just looked at me and walked right past me I was like ooh that's man made but you know what I mean like when he took this long walk I'm like you have had opportunity to actually be mad and not to say that he shouldn't be mad because she's saying that she would do that to him I think that telling people that you would stab your boyfriend because you're mad at him in an argument is insane but there was ample opportunity for him to really be mad and he never got it never got this bad maybe he just hit his limit and he just needed to walk away but don't leave me you feel me you I could have went with you I would have trailed but behind you I remember like after an hour and a half Janaya looks at me and she's like we might have to spend a night here oh no I don't want to stay here it's just your fault but by the grace of God himself my uncle walks in the house I literally ran up gave him the biggest hug I was ready to go and let me tell you how toxic they are at this point he gave her a hug and a kiss she gave him a hug and a kiss she was so she didn't want to be there either she didn't want to be there at her cousin's house no one just get up so we get to leaving and I don't know how in the span of 10 minutes it literally took us 10 minutes to grab everything and get ready to go I'm in the car at this point and all I hear is Janaya arguing with her cousin why are you always beefing with people and they got into it so bad I wish I recorded it anyways we started making our way home I was so happy it's around like um at least three about to be 4 a.m at this point why does the car stop mid-highway remember i told you the engine get hot in the front and then we got to figure out what we're gonna do with the gallon of water that's why my uncle already put it in there when we got to the park the first time that was our last gallon forgot to fill it up because he was beefing with his bitch like, I'm gonna let it be with God. And I fell asleep again. And when I woke up after like another, I don't know how many minutes, it was gone. It was on the highway with me and the car was just sitting there on the side of the road. And I was like, oh, okay. Took me another nap, woke up and they was pouring water. I don't know where they got it. I don't know where they walked. I don't know how they got off the highway. I don't know who gave them a ride to the nearest store. All I know was when I went, when I woke back up that second time, water was being put in that engine and we made it home. And I remember thinking to myself that day, I can't do this no more. But now what's going, now we caught up. <laughs> so like I said, went to Blue Angels, we enjoyed it. We wanted to have some more fun. It was summer it was high it was sunny outside everyone wanted to key like it was a, it was good vibes like I, you would think that nothing even happened the night before and so we start making our way to John A's sister's house so we can wait for her to get off of work and wait for her to come back with her daughter so those two and then me John A, and my uncle and her nephew could all have a water balloon fight so y'all know I was geeked up every time we went to her auntie's house I loved being over there especially before she got off work because I mean that we got to wait at least an hour or two for her to get there and we was gonna keep for a few hours so I was like bye bye so as soon as we walk in my phone connect I get on the internet I start keying with the girls I start getting on uh she also had the PS4 so me and her like nephew would play like GTA a lot so how it works is let's say I'm sitting right here and then behind me and her sister's house is actually very very nice her apartment was super super nice there's a couch right there and then the nephew is sitting on that couch but there's also another couch like it's kind of like a like an L-shaped couch I'm mean, she had a lot of couches in there I don't know what the it was a lot but behind me was my uncle and his girlfriend they were kind of sitting on the very far part of the L-shaped couch and my uncle was on like a chair so I'm playing GTA and I do hear them get to like bickering a little bit but I'd pay it no mind like I'm just literally just trying to live in my vibes as they're bickering I can hear it like escalating louder and louder it's like what are y'all beefing about and then so I start paying attention being nosy and I hear my uncle say something like oh so you in front of me on Facebook like really right before I tune all the way out and I get to focus in about the game I heard him say and you gonna put your relationship status as single so you can just text you bitch uh, down down now I knew they was about to start beefing. At the time, I didn't think it was that important. And I just knew how they acted, though. So I knew they was about to go in. I was like, we might just have to leave soon. Like, we're probably not even going to have that water balloon fight today. And I already knew how they got. So I knew that they was about to be beefing about this. But I'm not going to lie. I still wasn't even tripping. I'm like, he about to go take him a little walk. And he could take an eight-hour walk. Today, I'm, I'm chilling. <laughs> so why, as I'm sitting there playing the GTA, all I hear is... <laughs> I was 
like, what the f I was scared to even intervene because I thought he was going to hit me. But I still did it anyway because I'm not in my, my business. He got her snatched up like this, handcuffed, and he's just... And she's eating them though. I, listen, I got to give it to her. She ate them. Everyone, she's still talking a little sh**. Punk. That's cool. Oh, really? Your hair nappy. You need to retwist. I'm just getting started. Every single one got back, still talked her sh**. I, I gotta get for her tens. When you deserve your tens, I'm gonna give them to you. I immediately kind of just got up and pushed him up off her. And let me make this clear as well. I'm not saying that what he's doing is right. I'm not saying that she deserved that. And I'm definitely not saying that it's okay. Like at all. I wanna make sure that's clear because I don't support DV. That's not my thing. I just wanna let y'all know that what I'm thinking at that time. You feel me? I start putting my shoes on. He's like, go get that $20 out of that purse. And I'm like, I'll give you the $20. Like, just let's go. Mind you, I had no $20. I spent my money on McDonald's on food. You know what I mean? The money that my grandpa gave me, I spent. So I didn't have no $20. I wasn't gonna know what I was gonna do, but he was just gonna have to get over it. So at this point, we're by the front door, and the front door is right by the entrance to the kitchen. Jarnea takes it upon herself to walk to a drawer. This drawer was the silverware drawer. As she opens it up and starts trying to like, she's shaking. So as she opens it up, she's like, Dude. my uncle takes the drawer and slams it. He's like, bitch, you're not grabbing no knife. And you can tell, and my, I'm sitting there right there, so I can see that her, her fingers got caught in it, but I can tell that her journal was up because the way she ate it, she does have a reaction like she pulls her hand out super, super fast, and then she looks at it, makes sure everything all right but i mean immediately she's like locks in again and that was them at opposite ends of the kitchen you feel me and unfortunately at the end that she was there it also had a steak knife holder and i remember they're just staring at each other from opposite ends i'm trying to stop her and i'm trying to be like let's just go like just back up just literally just back up and walk out the door backwards i'll have the door open like you know what i mean like i started opening the door and everything and i'm trying to pull him but he keeps hitting my hand off of him so i'm like bro like it's something's about to happen and i'm just like i hope that he gets a hold of her or if she does end up getting him there's only like a slice on my arm or something never like something like crazy you feel me they're staring at each other for dumb long he Try to make a move, she back up. She trying to make a move, he back up. Like they're looking at each other, they're reading each other's movements, and she makes the one mistake to look back real quick. But he makes an even bigger mistake. He reaches for the knife on this side, but he does not use his closest hand. He doesn't use his left hand, he uses his right. So as he's going over there, she peeps. As soon as her peripheral caught him lunging at her, she used the opportunity to close the gap between them and she ran into him with the knife in her hand and stabbed him. At first, I didn't know what to do. I've never been in a situation like this. I couldn't really even fathom what was going on. Like, no way my uncle just got stabbed right now. He takes a few steps back and I remember he's just kind of sitting there and he's not doing anything. Like, they're just both standing and it's quiet. So I'm like... Oh, oh, he's good. Like, she must have not had done anything. If anything, it must have been, like, just a scratch. And as soon as I thought that, he fell on the floor and he collapsed. The nephew comes up from the side of the living room he was at to, like, the other end of the kitchen. And he sees it and he starts crying even louder. And everything just kind of hits me too fast. Immediately, I run out the door. Remember, I told you I already had it open a little bit because I was trying to pull him back. Girl, I ran out the door. I went out there to call the police, but I didn't know the address to the place. So, I immediately see a neighbor walking and I run up to him screaming, like, help me, help me. My uncle just got stabbed. Can you please help me? I'm crying. He's literally looking at me so confused. I'm like, does this happen? Like normally, please, please help me. My uncle just got stabbed. Please, please, please help me. I'm crying. I'm bawling my eyes out. Bro, I gotta go back in there and make sure my uncle's okay because what if she's in there like finishing the job? I told him the apartment. I pointed to the apartment. I ran back into the apartment. My uncle is not even there no more. I'm like, you not in here like that. When I ran back in the house and he wasn't on that floor where he was when I left, I, I messed up. Like I, I ran into the trap that everybody in the scary movies run into that I swear I wasn't going to. And I thought that she was going to shut the door behind me and then she was going to try to get me next. You feel me? She was, but listen, <laughs> it would have been a sad day for her. She would have lost. That would have been a battle. She wouldn't have won. And I promise you that. I take collateral around this way. I would have snatched her nephew up. Like, what's up? What's up? Back up off me. Back up off me. You, you don't want that. Ah, oh, you thought I was going to get him, didn't you? You didn't you? You're stupid. Bro, I don't know what just happened with my SD card, but it's like an hour later. <laughs> Where was I at? I think I said... I was gonna choke out her nephew, exactly. Yeah, so that's obviously not what happened. As soon as I get to like close to the living room, I see that he's sitting on the couch and he has his shirt off now, but he's using it to like apply pressure to the blood. And she's over there still arguing with him. Like, look what you made me do. And da -da -da -da. I'm just irritated. And then she tries to basically have me go in the room with her nephew. And she like kind of like tries to keep us in there. Like, don't come out of here. And she asked me like, did they call the police? Are you sure they called the police? Did you call the police? What happened? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Maybe 10 minutes later. Now listen, Seattle police ain't good for too much but they quit. I shit y'all not. Mad police officers came out, but they didn't come out with regular, you know, 
clips on them. They came out with the big boys. I'm like, whoa, y'all doing a bit much. Now, like I said, the neighborhood is a little ghetto. One squad car with two people would have been more than enough. You feel me? Like, why did they need to bring that many people? They packed it out like SWAT team. I remember just looking out the window with the nephew and I'm like, oh my God, thank the Lord that like, they're about to find the apartment because there was a way that you could, it was like one of them apartments where you didn't need a gate code to get in. All you really need to do was as soon as you walk up the stairs, it was the first floor. Take that left from right there. You feel me? I'm thinking the man who apparently called the police is gonna tell them that he went into that house, like that apartment right there. I'm wait, I'm just waiting for the knock. Why two minutes later we see the police leave? Like they did one little search. I don't know what they thought was gonna happen because they brought so many people with such big weapons. But they didn't stay for too long. They didn't really care to make the problem better. I ain't hear one knock. All I heard was the engine rev up and tires leaving. Oh, so that's how y'all feel. I thought, imagine we really were in danger. Like that would've irritated me, but I would've got to knocking on the window. I should've did that. I know he should've did that because she deserved to go to jail for what she did to my uncle. But like, but you know what? Like I can't, like I'm being a little biased. You know, he did beat her. So I'm gonna give her a little bit of a leeway just because don't no man need to be putting his hands on you. So maybe like 15 minutes later, he finally gets enough strength to like get up and we start going to the car because we're about to go to the hospital, obviously, so he can get stitched up. He's limping. I'm just helping him, making sure that he's getting to the car fine. And I mean the nephew in the back of the car, just quiet. And I'm looking at her because she's starting to piss me off now because she keeps arguing with him. But you can tell what she's, but you can, I can always read toxicity like this. For some reason, I didn't even know that I was like really clocking it for real, but I was clocking it because she would do stuff like this. This is what she was saying. Just send me to the police right now. Just take me to the police office. Like, just take me and you can, I don't care. Turn me in, I'll do my time. Do my time, I'll do it. Ma'am, why are you in the passenger seat? She had my uncle drive himself to the hospital. Why are you arguing with him? Like he's like, I'm not snitching on you. I'm not about to tell. I'm thinking you should. What's irritating me is the police was just here just a few minutes ago. If you really wanted to go to jail, you would have walked out with your hand behind your back like it was me, officer. You don't want to go. You know my uncle's stupid, and she was using that like guilt trip thing that toxic people do against him because she was trying to get him to you know say exactly what he said and it worked. It did. She did exactly what she needed to do and it worked out exactly in her favor. We finally get to the hospital. We're there for maybe like an hour. She obviously tells her sister what happened. You feel me? Her sister's irritated. Her sister's so mad. Her sister pulls up to the hospital. I'm thinking that she's gonna stay there and like kind of wait for Gerald to get stitched up. He ends up telling the nurse that he fell on a chair, that he was fixing a chair and then he fell on it. And I mean, you could tell she clocked in. She was like, oh really? She was like, wow, really? A chair? A chair did this to you? She's like, yeah. And I'm just sitting there looking at him like, you old. Janaya leaves with her sister. Like her sister doesn't even come inside the hospital to see what's up. She picks her son up. As she shouldn't, you know, she shouldn't have to be there. She picks her son up. Janaya leaves with her sister and me and my uncle are just there for maybe like another hour. He gets stitched up. They give him some medicine. And let me tell you what irritated me. So we're on our way back home to my great grandpa's house and I see that he stops at Safeway. So he's like, oh, I gotta run in here real quick. I gotta go grab something. And I was like, okay. If you don't know what Safeway is, it's a grocery store. It's a really nice grocery store. And I think they really probably only have them in like Seattle, maybe in the Northwest. It's almost like a Target sort of, but it's only for groceries. This albino pumpkin with cornrows walked outside with a card, a big teddy bear and balloons and chocolates. But guess why he walked out with a card, a big bear, balloons and some chocolate? It was their two year anniversary. He got her anniversary gift. <laughs> now, clearly I'm irritated. I'd have been, you know, played. I didn't did a lot and went up for a lot. I understand that. I know, I know I have had a very jaded past, but will, never will I have ever gone out that bad. I'm thinking to myself, did he just get this heifer an anniversary gift? And at that moment right there, I, all my anger that I have for her went to him. I don't know why, I just was so livid that he, she didn't deserve that to me. He just left you at the hospital after making you drive there, after arguing with you, after putting you in there. Now, now, like I said, not even mad at her for doing what she had to do. Don't you ever put your hands on me. But do I think that she deserved a gift? No, I don't care. I'm sorry, you can't change my mind. Why would you go get that woman a gift? He's just, and this is exactly why they were stuck in that relationship, because they don't know how to be good for themselves. Like at this point, I realized they loved each other really more than they loved themselves. And honestly, I don't even think she loved him for real because I'm sure he cheated and he had his ways, but she she was not slick about it. I never knew anything. Like she would, she would always accuse him of cheating, but she would never have any evidence. He would accuse her of cheating and have dummy evidence. Guys in her phone, guys sitting in her news. And that's why I said that I thought that it was ended up being a guy that beat him up. But earlier when I was telling you, he came home randomly, just like a black eye and a puffy face. Because I'm like, he must have caught either the person that was in the phone or maybe he just caught like someone trying to talk to her and then she was probably entertaining it. I don't know what happened, but I know that she was the root of that problem. He gave her the gift. They kissed. I remember her sister was still a little irritated, but she was like, she was over it. All the, you know, blood had got cleaned up at that point. And then we went home. So not only 
Julie is my uncle a sucker, but now I don't got no more Wi-Fi. Yeah, I went to the car to grab something, but it was dark around this time, so this is way later in the day. And by the time he was coming back from the car, he had to go grab the medicine. Just like, he just kneeled on his knee and just started crying, and I just felt like, help, I didn't know what to do. Like, sir, I can't help you at this point, you feel me? Like, my tears have ran out for you. As soon as you bought her them presents, I lost all sympathy for him, I'm sorry. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I still felt bad because he's in pain, but you know, some also some more little extra added sauce to the story. This is also one of the uncles that used to lock me in that basement. Didn't feel too bad, I'm sorry. You don't like when people treat you like that, do you? It hurts, doesn't it? It's traumatizing, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, Svoto. All right, y'all, that's the end of today's video. Um, I hope y'all enjoyed this. I'm not gonna lie, I'm tired. I hope, I just stuttered a lot. Like, I've been stuttering this whole video. This is about to be a hot mess to edit. Let me know in the comments what gags y'all the most about this story. I, okay, I'm not gonna lie. I think the gaggiest part for me was not even that she actually did it, but that he bought her the gifts. Follow me on all my social medias, y'all. I'm active over there. I'm always on live on TikTok. If you also want to see me and like get on the phone with me, talk to me more, I'll also get an early access to all YouTube videos before they come out. Go ahead and join the Patreon. It's four dollars a month. I mean, a date with me or a four for four. You can just come on, kick it with us. Like we be kicking over there. I love it. The Patreon girls in the comments, y'all. Let them know who y'all are. I appreciate y'all so much. Love y'all a hundred times. Kisses on both cheeks. Check up the deuces. Keep it fishy, and I'ma see y'all next week. Bye!